This Massachusetts primary race is about more than a seat in Congress. In some ways, it's a fight for the future of the Democratic Party. I think this is what this district needs. Somebody who knows how to get things done and this fight strong. This district deserves and what these times require is activist leadership. Someone that will be a movement and a coalition builder. There are two Democratic candidates running in Massachusetts' 7th Congressional District, an area that contains most of Boston and its surrounding suburbs. The seat is famous for being the one held by John F. Kennedy and Tip O'Neill. The incumbent, Michael Capuano, has never faced a serious challenge in 10 terms until now. Running against him is Ayanna Presley, the first black woman ever elected to the Boston City Council. While Capuano points to his experience and liberal voting record, Presley's message is change can't wait. The truth is they don't really differ much on policy. But in challenging Capuano, Presley is saying that the party hasn't done but enough. The Democrats were in the majority, and we had seniority, and how did we leverage it? What did we do with it? She says representation matters, and that her perspective as a progressive woman of color could bring much needed change to the state's only minority majority district. The 7th Congressional District is one of the most diverse districts, and yet it is also one of the most unequal in this delegation, and perhaps even in our country. I'm running because this district deserves, and these times require, bold, activist leadership. Presley is being compared to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who this year ran against Democratic Congressman Joe Crowley in New York and won. In some ways, the races mirror each other, a progressive woman of color taking on a 10-term white congressman. But Presley differs from Ocasio-Cortez in some key ways. She isn't a political outsider, nor does she identify as a democratic socialist. And Capuano is no Crowley. He's street smart, a known progressive, who's backed by organizations like the Congressional Black Caucus. I mean, look, I cannot be a woman of color. You know, and, and if that's what people care about, you know, look, that's fine. I, I, I accept that. I understand that. I just don't think there are that many people who will vote for me because I'm a white male or vote against me because I'm a white male. Capuano points to his voting record and long experience. Said, it does take a while to learn how to get things done in Congress. It does take a while to learn how it works, and especially when you're in the minority. And in this particular case, uh, I've been there for a while, and my record speaks for itself. In a WBUR poll released in early August, Capuano maintained a 13-point lead over Presley. The same poll found Presley with an advantage among younger and non-white voters. But in a primary election, getting those voters to turn out could prove challenging for Presley. So what typically happens in primaries is they're pretty low turnout affairs. And we see that although this district is majority minority, in the past, the majority of voters who have turned out for primaries have been white, and they tend to skew much older. This race also comes at a time of change for the Democratic Party and Congress. Already this primary season has set a record for the number of women who have secured a majority party nomination for the House. Presley wants to position herself as part of this tide of change within the Democratic Party. With his popularity and progressive reputation, Capuano is standing on his record. 